Hanbit, and I'm a pastry chef from Korea. Hi everybody, it's Hanbit here. 안녕하세요, 조한빛입니다. In today's video, I'll show you how to make an amazing banana bread using my recipe. Banana bread is meant to be a very homey food, and that's why I'm dressed up in a regular apron rather than my professional chef wear. You don't need any fancy equipment or any fancy ingredients. You're going to use all the regular ingredients that you'll see in a normal kitchen. Everybody loves banana bread. It's great as a very rich, sweet breakfast, and it's also great to make for kids after school. The best thing about banana bread is that it's not only delicious, but it's so easy to make it. Have you clicked like and subscribe? Talking a bit more about banana bread, there are so many recipes out there. There are so many different types of banana bread and many different variations. The first type is banana bread without chocolate. And obviously the second type is banana bread with chocolate. And it's the first type of banana bread that I'm going to show you today. You might have seen from my carrot cake recipe, but personally, I love raisins, cinnamon, and nuts. So all those three are going to go into this first type of banana bread. Regarding the second type, which is banana bread with chocolate, you can add either chocolate chips or I've seen people adding covered chocolate. But the whole point is that you're pairing banana with chocolate. I'll upload a video in the future on this chocolate banana bread. Before we start making the batter, I need to prepare the pan. So I'm going to grease the pan with butter. By the way, the pan I'm using today is a mid-sized pan that you usually use for pound cakes. Just to tell you the dimensions, it is roughly 7 by 15 and the height is around 6 centimeters. I know that everyone uses different sized pans, so either scale up or scale down my recipe by the same ratio to fit the size of your pan. Obviously, you will need to adjust the baking time and the temperature as well. As I mentioned earlier, banana bread is so easy to make. Why? Because you simply have to split the ingredients into two. I've got wet ingredients and dry ingredients. I'm going to start with the wet ingredients, mix all of them together, and then add in or sift in the dry ingredients. And that's it really. It's as simple as that. You really want ripe bananas that are sweet. And because you're adding in a lot of bananas, the sweetness of your bananas will affect the sweetness of your banana bread. And I've had students before telling me that the sweetness of their banana bread varied from time to time. And that was purely due to the sweetness of the bananas. If your banana isn't ripe enough, then you can either wait or there are methods that you can use to speed up the process. I've written that down in the descriptions. Here we have eggs and then sour cream. You can either replace the sour cream with yogurt. And that adds a bit of tang, which I like. Grapeseed oil and melted butter. I'll talk a bit about this. If you look at the recipes out there, some only use butter and some only use oil. Here, I've used a mix of the two. And the reason for that is that if you just use oil only, that's perfectly fine. And that's going to result in a banana bread that's a bit more moist. But as you know, butter has its own characteristics and it really adds that depth of flavor. So now you probably know what I'm going to say. Take my recipe, just try it as it is, and adjust the amount of oil and melted butter according to your taste. Now, going over to the dry ingredients. I strongly recommend you use brown sugar. It not only adds its characteristic flavor, but it also adds moisture in this case. Here I have all-purpose flour, a bit of salt, baking soda, and a bit of cinnamon. If you don't like cinnamon, you can leave it out, it's fine. Finally, I have chopped walnuts. These are roasted chopped walnuts and raisins. And I'm going to plump these raisins, which I'm going to show you in a minute. So all the ingredients are ready. I just need to plump the raisins. When you say plumping the raisin, it's basically soaking the raisin in some sort of liquid. In this case, I'm going to use rum. If you don't like rum or you can't use rum, then just using hot water is fine. Just let it soak for about five to 10 minutes. And I'm going to pass it through a sieve to shake off the rum just before using it. First step is the bananas. From my experience, the best way and the easiest way to work with bananas is to use a fork. Now, all the wet ingredients will go in. Eggs, grapeseed oil, melted butter. Don't worry too much about the melted butter as long as it's melted. With mine, it's around 40 to 50 degrees Celsius. 
I'm just going to mix what I have here. And then once that's mixed, I'm going to add in the sour cream. Sour cream goes in. Now light brown sugar. Just whisk it until you feel that the sugar has sort of dissolved. All your ingredients are at room temperature, so your sugar will dissolve. Now that's done, I'm going to add in the rest of the ingredients. Time for my spatula. Just gently fold in the powdered ingredients. Right, time for my walnuts and raisins. Walnuts go in. These are my plumped raisins. I'm going to shake the rum off. And fold everything together. I don't see any dry ingredients. The batter is mixed well, so I'm going to pour it into my pan. I just tap it a few times to spread out the batter evenly inside the pan and also release any of the air bubbles that might be trapped inside. So now, this is going to go into the preheated oven. Right, here's my banana bread straight out from the oven. It is really hot still and it smells fantastic. I'm going to take it out of the pan and put it on the cooling rack so that it can cool down completely. But before I do that, I'll show you a method of checking whether your banana bread is fully baked or not. Just get a rod like this, stick it inside the banana bread. And if it comes out clean without any wet batter, that means it's fully baked. And from that point onwards, baking further is a matter of personal preference. You might want a darker color, you might want a crispy crust, etc. As mentioned earlier, we all use different size pans, which means that you need to adjust your baking temperature or your baking time. My advice is stick to the same temperature to start with and then adjust the baking time. That's the easiest way to go about. So in this case, we will start at 160 degrees Celsius and I've baked for an hour today, but if you're baking a size that's much larger, you might bake for slightly longer than an hour. But of course, you wouldn't know for how much longer you would need to bake it for. So what you should do is take one of these rods, stick it in after about 50 minutes or so, and if anything wet comes out, bake it for a bit longer and test it again after about 10-15 minutes. That way you will find out the perfect baking time and the temperature for your oven and your pan. I'm going to let this cool down completely and especially with banana bread, it takes a really long time to cool them down. Of course, this banana bread is great as it is. All the decoration that I'm going to show you is optional, but it will make it look nicer. I'm first going to apply some glaze. If you want to find out about how to make this, take a look at my previous upload. Now I need to sprinkle some sugar on top of sliced bananas and blowtorch it. I'm going to place these sliced bananas on top of my banana bread. And finally, I'm going to add some green, which is going to bring my banana bread to life. There's my amazing banana bread, Hambit's banana bread. I've whipped some heavy cream with sugar here. Take a look at the descriptions for the recipe.
perfect. That looks so good. I'm going to try it now. All right, look at this. Mmm. That's so good. It's delicious. It's dense and moist at the same time, which are the qualities that I look for in a banana bread. And also there's raisins and walnuts, which I like, plus a bit of cinnamon. And in terms of the banana bread slice right here, I've added whipped heavy cream, banana, and maple syrup. And that maple syrup actually works well with banana bread. Overall, it's a fantastic banana bread, and I'm sure you'll love it. Hope you've enjoyed this banana bread tutorial. In terms of how to store the banana bread, take a look at the descriptions. I've written it down there. This banana bread is so good that I'm certain that you'll love it and your families and friends will love it as well. I'll see you next time with another amazing recipe. Thank you very much. Kamsanida.